Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? One, two. All right. Cool. Okay, so in the Star Engine presentation, that was Benoit. In this one, I am Balt, my player persona. I will now channel my inner Jared in this one, and I will be your host for this panel. Woo! It's time to discuss a social universe, but before we start, I have a couple warnings. First one, let's take a look at this one. I took this in our last technical preview demonstration. And God, I was so happy to see all these people on the train. It just made me like very, very emotional. And so I want to take a moment to thank, to thank every one of you that have participated with Tech Preview Server Meshing Test A, B, C, D, and E so far. You guys have been thousands to come and help us test this technology. And the team and I are really humbled and we feel energized by your energy. So on our behalf, thank you very much. Now, the above picture is really nice, other than this guy. But it does present a problem. A fundamental part of playing a mass massively multiplayer online game is how you connect with other players to join in on adventures or to receive support when you're, you want to get out of a tricky situation or you want to participate in endeavors that are bigger than yourself. Or simply you want to run a business and make a profit. Well, as our game server shards grow, you will encounter more players. And for that, we need to scale Star Citizen's social tools to MMO size. Our ambition has always been to build a grand social system, including not only the game, but the world outside, like on Spectrum. Unfortunately, the focus has been elsewhere for a long time. We have neglected this part of side, this side of the game in favor of others. For example, the Comlink app is by far the oldest application in MobiGlass. It's now time to correct this and make progress on this plan. Our goal, as a reminder, in Star Citizen is to cater to all types of players. Star Citizen, in that respect, is not a black or white. It's not an either or kind of game. We are not an achievers versus casuals game. We are not a socializers versus solo players game. We are not a role players versus mechanics focus game. Or dare I say, we are not a PvE versus PvP game. We are all of those things. We strive to build a social environment in the game that is easy to engage with, consistent and dependable, and trustworthy, where you can judge danger safety or shadiness. And we want this to be deeply rooted in gameplay mechanics, like reputation and progression. So today we're going to take a look at the updated Star Citizen social tools and how they tie into the game. But first, look at this guy, a warning. What we're going to show you is very early work. And we will not be making a revolution or breaking boundaries. We just want to bring our game up to MMO standards. Or like Jared likes to say, bringing our 30th century game into the 21st century. <laughs> and so uh, in order to do this, uh, we've enlisted some help. First of all, throughout this presentation, all the screenshots are made from you, the community, directly uh, pulled from our community hub. Uh, you're going to see some player names on screen. Uh, most of them are all of our most diehard Evocati members. And for this, we should really take a moment and thank our Evocati members for their renewed support. They're always there for us. They get the worst and worst of the bills, and they do get power through. This is an actual shot from the last Evocati. Forget the prisoner mentioned here the, from the work mines. But, and so I'm not going to lie. This presentation is going to be a lot of Moby Glass. It's not super flashy. But focus on what the tools will allow you to do and their impact. But for this, I need some help myself. So I'm going to make a party, and to get, I'm going to get some developers to help. So let me first invite our senior systems designer, Gabriel Hector. Hello, CitizenCon. Hope you're doing all right. And Ben, you forgot to cover the Swedish before in your earlier introduction. So, tjena. 
<laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> All right, we need some more. Let's invite Assistant Design Director JJ to the stage. My spot's quite far away. Yeah, yeah no, no, you walk it up. <laughs> walk up. <laughs> OK, so Social Universe began, begins with your friends. That's your closest group. It's the first go-to when you want to play. Our current friend system is dated, and it includes things that are, well, not really friends. So my first question goes off to JJ to kick us off. What are we doing to improve friends and friends management? So we're taking our oldest app in the MobiGlass, the Comlink app, and we're upgrading it to a brand new social app. And this is now going to be your one-stop shop for all of your friends and group gameplay. Now, this is the new and improved friends list. So you'll notice, sadly, one of our oldest friends that we all have is missing, though, and that's ATC. Sadly, our friendship has ended with ATC. What? I'll have no friends at all, then. <laughs> <laughs> so this is now just a dedicated space for your real friends. So you're now going to be able to see what those real friends are doing with richer presence information. So giving you better awareness of where your friends are, what they're doing, or if they're not on, when they were last seen. And then you'll also be able to reflect, reflect your own status. So you can let friends know if you're away, don't want to be disturbed, or if you just want to hide offline for a while. Another key upgrade is synchronizing with Spectrum as well. So you'll be able to see friends that are in Spectrum itself, Arena Commander, or just chilling on the launcher. And that also means that you can accept and receive invites to and from Spectrum even while you're offline. And throughout this presentation, any functionality that is shared between the game and the web and the launcher, we're aiming to synchronize across all. And speaking of synchronizing, when we have multiple characters, <laughs> your friends will be shared across all of them too. Nice. So some, some people are real socialites. I know I've seen them. They have a lot of friends. I'm talking multiple pages and pages of friends. What are we doing to help management of huge friends list? Nice humble brag, Ben. Uh, well, in fact, we are giving you the ability to add notes to your friends list so you can remember, hey, this is that cosplayer that I met at CitizenCon 2954. Or maybe it's JJ's super weird username. This is JJ. Also, uh, you can add people to a favorites list, meaning that the people that you interact with most in the game are always going to be shown at the top of your friends list for your convenience. Additionally, we're moving the voice chat into the social app. And tell, well, tell why? <laughs> Who are you going to call? <laughs> That's the question. You're going to call your friends. You're going to call your party. So this is where it should live. Seems to have got a, U a lot of UEC there as well, Ben. I swear to God, I didn't dupe any cargo. <laughs> this is just my personal allowance. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> all right, so that's all cool for your close buddies, but the one, one thing that always happens when you, when you meet people is that some of them aren't nice. App users, pad rammers, active griefers, you know? Currently, we can't do anything about that in the game. What are we doing to help the situation? So in addition to the friends list, we're also now going to have a block list. And we like to think of block people as reverse friends. They're just people that you really don't want to talk to anymore. So what we're trying to do is we're doing something called uh, black holing them from communications. So you can't see them talk, and they can't see you talk anymore. And not only for communications, whenever you see some of these other systems we're about to talk about where you can group up, we're going to make it harder for you to see each other as well. Now, we also have a much requested hostiles list for people who have made a real enemy of you as well. The KOS list is finally making its way in. Oh, yeah. Um, you'll also be able to add notes here as well, just so you can remember that person I blocked two years ago. You, you remember why, because you're going to forget. And then for those situations where someone really wants to go the extra mile to be a super mega ass, you can report them to us, and we'll deal with them for you. All right, so now I have my friends list up to date. I can find my friends easily based on rich presence in real time, and I'm ready to go, ready to go on an adventure. But for that, I need a party. The party is at the core of the social experience when you're heading into a mission, meeting with other players, or whether they're a friend or not. Our party system is very bare bones at the moment. It does have some cool features, but what are we planning to improve parties? 
Yeah, so as you said, it does have some cool features like party launching, the party markers, quantum syncing. It's all good stuff, but let's take a closer look at the new features of the party list. So with server meshing, we are right now at a unique opportunity for us. So we already support large parties, but we want to do this well. <laughs> We have, we have been seeing what you do in the tech previews, and people have been partying up in hundreds. 100 plus people in one ship? Come on. <laughs> and that's all right. We just want to make sure that we're adding better support for this, like search functionality, making it easy to find people in your party. Also, just like we did with the friends list, we're adding rich presence here as well. But for the party, you're going to want more real-time gameplay-related info, like if someone's downed or dead or maybe, maybe offline for some reason. A big thing, though, is the ship and seat breakdown. So you will see. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's worth the cost. <laughs> so you will see all the vehicles that your party members are in, as well as the seat that they are in. This will give you great situational awareness and allows you to coordinate better than ever before. It's essentially a mini fleet manager. OK. Oh. <laughs> so there's going to be more improvements as well. So you're going to be able to control permission for invites. So only your leaders and assistant leaders can actually invite people. So it's no longer an absolute free for all. Uh, and we're adding an absolute MMO staple as well which is the ready check. So as we add more and more challenging group gameplay, you're going to be able to coordinate a lot better. And while we're talking about group play, um, and maybe it's unwanted group play in this case, we're improving the quality of life for our streamers as well. So we'll no longer have a shared playlist. We're going to be obscuring things like your on-screen name and location and so on, just so you're a bit harder to find while you are streaming. And that's the full friends and party tab. Pretty cool. It's a party for the eyes. <laughs> it's a party for the eyes. <laughs> all right, so the new friends and party place is really the one-stop shop to manage all your real-time interactions with other players or access your comms channel. That's cool, but as we navigate the verse, it's always very difficult to find people. We have a single channel. People are blasting, looking for groups. It's a bit awkward. You, find, you never know what you're going to find. With bigger shards, I know I'm the bigger shards guy now, but we're going to have a lot more players in there. There must be a better way. Well, Ben, we have given this some thought. So the second tab in the social app, introducing the party finder. <laughs> so the party finder, it's a dynamic system that's going to make it easy for you to find interesting and engaging gameplay. It's basically player-powered matchmaking. So if you are looking for more players, just go in here, advertise your party, give it an informative name like Ben has done here. Space Combat Fun Times. And you could even uh, set things like a specific contract that you want to play or roles that you're looking to fill. Maybe you need gunners, engineers, pilots. Meat shields. Maybe that. <laughs> uh, you could also limit the number of members. You might uh, want to do some, again, specific content. So you want to do with a set number of members in the party. Or you might want a tight-knit group. That's something that I would like very much. Uh, maybe you just don't want to split the contract rewards, right? So once you have that information, then it's time to list your party. And then people are going to be applying to join your group, which is kind of like a reverse invite. You're applying to the party. You're joining yourself. You're getting involved. You're the reverse guy today. <laughs> I'm stuck in one gear. Um, <laughs> so you can then um, request. Uh, the people that are requesting, you can then look at their information, and you decide on whether or not you want to accept or reject them, just so you can tailor your group to the kind of gameplay that you're trying to do. Then on the other side, finding a party should be easy too. So all of those super cool things that Gabriel just mentioned, so like setting your group name, roles needed, party size, and so on, you're going to be able to use those as filters to find the right group. And that this is all purely because we want you to find the kind of group gameplay that you want to engage in. And it's for all types of players. FPS combat, racing, beacons, role play, eating burgers at Whammers, 
finding cool vistas. It should always be easy to find action, things to do, and people to play with. So I can create a party from a couple friends. I can party launch into the game on the same shard. Then I can share my party with the party finder. And other people will want to join up. Now we're talking. But I'm curious, as we're going to get bigger shards, let's say that already, how will we improve communication? It's very much of a mess right now. Our chat's very bare bones. And voice comms, we never really know if they work. Well, let's chat about chats. So we're adding options for you to customize the chat window, giving you the power to make the chat your own. We're also adding chat tabs. We're bringing back tabs. We're, we're bringing them back from other games. <laughs> and this means that you can set up customizable views filtered for any area of the game that you are interested in. And Ben, you had a UI team make a little mock-up of uh, some of the other functionality we're adding, right? I sure did. I also add, got them to add the combat login. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> How kind of you. <laughs> so first off, as we can see here, we're making slash commands actually useful. So no longer just chicken dancing and flexing. It's going to be able to help you send messages to party, to proximity chats with say and slash yell commands, as well as sending DMs to other players. What the hell, Ben? You said Ooh. you were going to take Hey, you out. wanted a real example. <laughs> sure. Um, so another thing we're adding is that we're giving you the power to share information more easily via links. So first off, here we have contract links taking you to the contract manager for that specific contract. Cheesecake! Yes, cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, cheesecake is maybe better than Seno Fred's. Also, we are adding star map links. Let's have a look at what that looks like. This means that you can click the link, and it will take you to the exact location in the star map, <laughs> making it easy for you to group up. Another thing we're adding is item links. And well, you'll see why you want to link items in our Crafting Your Home presentation tomorrow. Lastly, we're adding player links to make it easy for you to connect your friends with one another. Right? Um, so while we're talking about comms, Sean just messaged us about FOIP. Do you want to invite him to the party? I sure can, Gabe. We do need an expert to discuss VoIP and FOIP anyway. So you guys give us some air, remember hot mics, and let's invite Sean, Master of Faces Tracy, to join the party. Right. Hey, Ben. Hey. How you doing? I'm good. Hello, everyone. Good to see you all here. So. I've come up uh, to talk a little bit about VoIP and VoIP. So it's a bit of the communication channels beyond just text chat, right? All right, so VoIP and VoIP are our systems in-game. VoIP, voice over internet protocol, and VoIP, which I termed way back in 2019, face over internet protocol. So VoIP gives us spatialized audio where you can hear and be heard within the universe. Uh, whether you've got a helmet on, you've got a different filter. If you're far away, you can hear that they're far away. But we added face to that uh, way back in 2019. So it's cool because you can place video calls, uh, you can speak and see each other speak in the game, and you can take fun selfies like this. So again, I mentioned it's uh, back in 2019. So it's been in for a little while, but it hasn't really been updated so much uh, since then. So the cool part about it, and I really got to mention, it's not a replacement for motion capture equipment. Uh, it's not a depth camera. It uses pretty much anybody's 2D-based web camera to track your face. So it, it can do great things, but it's got its limitations as well. What's kind of cool about it is that VoIP and VoIP are actually coupled. They're encoded and decoded together on the network super efficiently so that it's always in sync. And anybody that's worked on facial animation with audio data knows that sync is super important. So it's been used in expected ways and unexpected ways by the community. Let's have a look. This is Wallace Clint. 
Slim? What is it? Seems someone's on our case. One of our Nine Tails facilities was sacked last night. Total loss. The bunker was destroyed. Fuck. And three, two, one, go. <laughs> This isn't what they said it would be. The subject has crossed the perimeter. Most people don't associate ladies like us with salvage, do they, Shell? That's right, Mel. In fact, we're the best in the old system at salvage, aren't we, Mel? That's right, Shell. And you look like you get about a bit. <laughs> I'll do it. You need a break. What? No. You're up there in what? Your underwear, just drinking hooch or something, and just singing hooch. away. Wait. We have hooch. Hi, I'm Natronics, and you're watching Redline, your source for adventurous stories throughout the verse. The name's Brad. Agent Davina Brad. Excuse me, Captain? I'm Aaron Baxter. We topped off yet, Aaron Baxter? Just about, sir. Good. I don't want to spend another second on it. <laughs> Something we have in common, sir. Hey. Yeah. It was that day when I met Mr. President that my life changed for the better. Eat that apple. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Apples. <laughs> you were never supposed to know any of this, Detective. You were supposed to die at Safe Haven. Rachel. Rachel's dead. Hey, man. I'm back again. You have any hats? I'll do it. I've read the camp. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at, sir? Get, go away. <laughs> so that was all content made by the community, and I love it. I love it. I think it's awesome, bugs and all. But there's probably some improvements that we can make for that. So. One of the big ones that we've made is head rotation tracking. It's actually something we were already doing to do head tracking in first person, but we never could move the head around uh, it, on the actual character itself, which we've been able to do. Uh, some cool stuff like range of mo... Jared? Jared? Yeah, Sean? Can we just... Uh, let's just do a fake video call. Can we do a fake video call? Oh, you know we can do a fake video call, Sean. All right, cool. So let's call one of my guys, Oliver Cook. He's been working on some new tracking updates. Hey, Sean, and a big hello to everybody at Sitcom. How's it going? Hey, Ollie. It's great to see you. Everyone's having a great time. I see you're using FOIP. Where are you? Drive. That's correct. I'm sat here in the comfort of my own home, talking to you via the power of FOIP and my webcam. We've been working on FOIP recently, and we're starting to see some improvements to the quality of the tracking in-game. That sounds awesome. Can you tell everyone what you've done to improve it? Well, we started off by looking at what we originally had, and we realized that some mouth poses were really difficult to pull. So we focused on improving the range of motion of the mouth, which now looks like this. Hopefully, you can see there's more of a one-to-one -one relationship with what's going on in my webcam. And this has helped some of those problematic poses we were seeing before, one of which being a closed-lipped smile, which was quite difficult to achieve previously. Hmm. We've also started to add in secondary motions that happen naturally when pulling combination face shapes, like squinting in the eyes when smiling or frowning. And when we combine these secondary motions with the wrinkle maps, it really goes to show just how much work has gone into these heads. Let's see how many wrinkle maps we can trigger, huh? Ah. Ah. And finally, one other thing we noticed was the tracking quality could be quite noisy in environments where the lighting is less than ideal. So to combat this, we've introduced tracking stabilization, which helps to reduce the amount of noise we get from the webcam. We're seeing positive results in low light conditions, but we're also seeing a small quality boost in optimal lighting conditions. The result is a more expressive and stable face, which is great for using in-game or making videos in the verse. And we still have a little ways to go with FOIP, but the future is bright for this feature, and we can't wait to see what wonderful things you use it for in the verse. So I see you in the character creator. Let's change how you look. 
yeah, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's change up my appearance here a little bit and see what we can make. The super cool thing about the character customizer is that it continues to track my face even when editing. And this is great if you want to see what FOIP will look like on your character before you commit to your appearance. Let's start off by changing my hairstyle, shall we? We have a bunch of cool hairstyles to pick from, and I used to have pretty long hair back in the day. So let's try and find something longer than I currently have. Uh, okay, that's wild. Uh, not quite what I'm looking for, but what else do we have? Uh, ah, dreadlocks. Super cool. Not what I'm after, though. Let's see here. Uh, ah, there we go. Much better. The fun thing here is with the head tracking, it's much easier to rotate around and quickly see what I'm going to look like. Let's stick with that for now. That looks good to me. We can do the same for anything else in the customizer, but I'm going to go ahead and remove my beard here, because I want to show you that FOIP still works when changing the structure and characteristics of my actual face. We have a lot of heads in our customizer, and I'm just going to cycle through a few of them here to show you that whatever we choose, we're still tracking, and we're good to go. We can even start to manipulate individual aspects of the face, with no detriment to the mapping onto the head. FOIP won't break when you combine these heads together. So if you just want to tweak a small aspect of your character, or take on the likeness of one of the heads included, you can do so, and test out exactly how the tracking is going to look based on your face movements in the webcam. You can now see I'm someone totally different, and we're having no troubles tracking. And if I don't like what I've picked, I can always just randomize here which I think is a great way of not only showing the countless combinations of heads that we can make, but also that FOIP will continue to work with anything that we throw at it. I think I'm looking pretty good here, Sean. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, good. I think it's pretty unique to Star Citizen. Thanks a lot for showing it. Anytime. And I hope everybody has an awesome sit -down. See you later. Pretty cool. All right, that's great, Sean. But the reliability of our voice transmission has been a bit spotty, with many players reporting quality loss or even full audio loss. What are we doing to improve the overall our infrastructure behind VoIP and FOIP? Well, first of all, we've heard you. We know. We've tried it. And it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. So uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be updating the voice service and a total overhaul of the voice server. Uh, this is actually important. We need to do this anyways uh, because we have to up update the voice infrastructure for the much larger shards that are coming. So this is going to improve reliability and the voice quality. So one of the biggest things that we're going to be doing for you guys is to make sure that you have feedback in the game for when this is working and when this is not working. When you're transmitting, when you're receiving, you, you really have to know. So whether that's picture in picture, whether that's an icon telling you you're transmitting, uh, these are all going to be things that we're adding as we go forward with these features. Cool. Good stuff. What? Am I done? Should we get Gabe back on? Yeah, let's get Gabe back in here. Hey. Okay, there's room for four. Yeah. There's a right? lot of people on stage now. A bit ben, crowded, right? Can we, can we kick Sean? Yeah, we can. I think we should kick Sean. Bye, Sean. Certainly do it. <laughs> Bye, Sean. <laughs> Bye, Sean. <laughs> All right, now we've made some friends, we've joined parties, and we even kicked some people. That's super great. But what if you're new to the game? Ben, behind you. Oh! <laughs> the guide system. So we've introduced the guide system on the web a while ago. And this allowed new players and experienced players to match up, basically for a new player to get training and learning the ropes. Wait, are we bringing it in the game? Yeah, of course we are. <laughs> So ultimately, we want to encourage you all to help one another. And it's very important for a game as large and as complex as Star Citizen is. And while we're improving how we teach you the game, it's irreplaceable to have another player by your side showing you the ropes. 
So we want to keep the guide types from the website, because there's already a lot of good ones there. And they already cover a very wide variety of gameplay. And as we add more game systems, more guide types are going to get added too. And base building's a great example of that, which is a little teaser there for tomorrow. No, teaser. You're teased. Oh, yeah. Um, but now, how do you become a guide? So now there's going to be a list of requirements that you've got to meet. And this list will require you doing content like contracts, beacons, or many other things as well. And ultimately, once you've checked that list, you can then opt in to become a guide. And really, we've done this because we wanted becoming a guide to really mean something, both to yourself, to other players, so they can rely on your experience. But why become a guide? Out of the goodness of your own heart? No. <laughs> you want to get paid. Uh, some of you love to help, and a lot of you already are. Uh, but while I don't have time to get into specifics today, um, there are going to be rewards available for those of you that do put the effort in. Because we if like to get paid. You do like to get paid. <laughs> but ultimately, we, we want you to want to help. All right. So I've been doing a lot of guide stuff, and I've reached a guide level in a field that I like doing tons of content on. Or I'm a new player, and I need training in a key area. How does this all tie together? Let me answer my own question. It ties into beacons, trust, and rating systems. Or as we say internally, beacons, but actually good. <laughs> oh, be <laughs> yeah. So beacons have been in the game for a while, but we are juicing them up. Yeah, so let's look at how we're juicing them up. So first off, tying into the guide stuff, we're adding a new type of beacon. So guide beacons. It means that if you are a guide, you'll be able to respond to them. If you need a guide, you broadcast them. And if you need a guide, you can be certain that whoever responds to them knows their stuff. So this is obviously good for new players needing to learn the game. But even seasoned players like yourselves, you're going to have a great use for this, because there's always something new to learn in the verse. So you just post your question, you broadcast it out, the guides get alerted, they can accept it, contact you, and once you have the information you need, you take the beacon down, get out there, and use your newfound knowledge. So obviously, there's many different types of guide beacons here, but we're also adding more categories to service beacons. Now, all this beacon stuff sounds fine, but let's be honest. I have a friend, not me, but every time they use a beacon, they get ganked. How are we going to do that? What are we going to do to make sure that whoever is answering my call for help is trustworthy? Are you sure that's your friend and not you? <laughs> yeah, OK. Uh, so we've got a few ways of tackling this. And one of them is actually subsidizing the beacons. So guilds contribute rewards to the payouts on service beacons. And we'll get to guilds shortly. But that could be money, reputation, or potentially other rewards as well. Because we like getting paid. And ultimately, that keeps the cost down for the people that need help, but rewards the people that are helping. And this actually finally makes it viable to do beacons for whatever profession you like to do. Medics, refuelers, and repairers, just to name a few. But if you misbehave and you fail the beacon, there's no payout for you. So that's one incentive. The other is that we're adding a proficiency rating. Responders can earn that rating by successfully completing service beacons. You go from bronze up to gold, which indicates your level of experience and success. And only the top few will be able to earn platinum status, which essentially puts you on a leaderboard and marks you as one of the best playing in your region. So when broadcasting, responders offer to help, and you'll see their rating. Then you'll get to pick who you want to help you out. Then let's say you're not very good, or you like to misbehave a lot. Failing a beacon will result in losing rating. And then repeat offenders will enter the red zone. The bold zone. And then only really desperate people are going to take you on. We're making the system much more robust to the point of automatically determining success or failure. So we're putting a lot of focus on making the system difficult to exploit as well in the many different ways that it can be right now. So criminal types, like you, Benoit, will have to get much more creative. So yeah, that's all great from the Beacon broadcaster's perspective, right? It's pretty cool stuff. But they're not the only ones getting ganked. 
the, the beacon responders, they're also in a bad position. So what are we doing for the beacon responders? Well, we want to give you some idea of the risk you're putting yourself into by responding to the beacon. So we're adding trust rating. So if we look at this person who's looking for some help to repair here, well, you can see their last five recent beacons that they've broadcasted. They have two neutral ones. Something's gone wrong, but it wasn't necessarily bad or illegal. Then they have a red one. That's bad. They have been up to something. But they have also been successful with two beacons. So, well, at least you can assess the situation before going into it. It ensures your safety when doing a good deed. And yeah, I think that's it we, uh, for beacons. So, uh, well, we've got AJ? one more big thing I guess we need to talk about, right? Which we're really excited for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That is exciting. I like this one. <laughs> Did someone mess with the slides? <laughs> In Sweden, we call this uh, a double barrel. <laughs> Well, it's not time for lunch just yet. So, who would like to talk about player organization? That's all right. It sounds like we've got a few, few people in orgs in the house today. <laughs> uh, but Benoit, you talked about this a while ago, right? It's been 84 years. <laughs> So I was originally asked to outline the original ideas between, be, uh, behind how organizations would work in the very early days of the project. A younger Ben, big ideas, same ideas, now action. You have no idea how happy I am that we're finally tackling this task and this design in the game to truly give you all the tools you need to make your empire in SC. There are more than 70,000 organizations registered on the RSI website. 69,999 of them of decent size, and then test. <laughs> Ridiculous. Too big. But all of those have custom identities, logos, charter. The amount of creative and high quality content you guys have always produced has always amazed us and inspired us. Those orgs range from a small group of friends with just the name to large companies spanning a large amount of players with the intent to share wealth, missions, and campaigns together. Now we want to make those orgs matter in the game. Should you choose to join or create an organization, we want this social aspect to be part of your progression. But don't let me spoil it. Let's get a real designer to cover this stuff. JJ, you are a self-proclaimed big MMO player yourself, so why don't you give us the details? <clears throat> I didn't realize I went around self-proclaiming so much, but thank you. <laughs> um, so, but as an MMO player, I understand the different terminologies used in a lot of different games, so I just wanted to very quickly go over how we're using it in Star Citizen. So orgs, as many of you know, the players coming together to achieve a goal, whatever you want your goals to be. We give you the framework and you set it up and drive it forward. And we were going to shout a few of them out, but I was actually told we couldn't play favorites, so we actually made our own. So we've got the Fellowship of JJ and... And the Baltzfold Buccaneers. Those what? guys. You guys made your own orgs? <laughs> yeah, we kind of left you out. Sorry about that, James. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have NPC factions, and they're already in the game. And you can earn or lose reputation with them. Now contracts and doing nice things will earn you rep. And killing and stealing and all of that horrible stuff you love, Ben. That will lose you rep. Ling and Redwind and the ones that you can see on there are just a few examples, and there's going to be a lot more to come going forward. Now, there are also guilds, like the Interstellar Transport Guild. And these are essentially collections of several factions, and we're putting them in a position to be more prevalent. What? You're saying there's something bigger than factions? Oh, yeah. So they're going to be something you interact with a lot, and they essentially handle contracts for the factions. But you will earn rep with both still, but as the bigger entity, the guild will be much more important. And you'll find out a lot more about guilds tomorrow at the Stars My Destination presentation at the end of tomorrow. Again, a tease. But now we can dive into some of our new org systems. Yes. Let's start with the basics. I want to find or I want to recruit for an org. Yeah. So welcome to the new app for everything orgs. 
Jeez. So. <laughs> With the mask. <laughs> so, orgs can be big and complex. And as we said, some of them have thousands of members. So when we designed the app, well, we made sure that we took this into account, but it's also something that we can expand on moving forward. So let's have a look at it. Now, I'd like to point out that the fellowship of JJ, like every designer-based org, is really focused on things like progression gameplay and mission and crafting and leveling up. But my Bolts Fault Buccaneers, no, they're the real deal. Now, we don't do any of that stuff. Now, we're in it for profit, interdiction lines, shipboarding action. We get all that sweet cargo for free. F for free? That sounds pretty illegal, Ben. I don't know what you're talking about. What's, it? What's in those crates? Slam! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it sounds like you guys might be interested in joining some big orgs. Well, I prefer something smaller. So I think it's fair to say that we like playing in different ways and we'll want to join different orgs. The recruitment tab is the place to find them. So we're giving you the tools to promote your org to potential members in order to give a best first impression to them. I've just noticed that, Ben. You might want to have a word with Rich. It looks like, what? Looks like he doesn't want you. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I'll have a speak with him. <laughs> anyway, yes. So we're adding filters for when you're basically trying to find a home. Uh, and we want to cater to all types of players, because we're a massive game, right? And orgs are combining tons of different gameplay in tons of different ways. So you can search by name if there's an infamous org you've encountered there, out there in the verse or online. Uh, you can search by size. So if you're after a big and active org like me, uh, or a small and more close-knit org like Gabriel. Then you can also search by the gameplay focuses you enjoy. So maybe you love trading in PvP. Or maybe you like events like the Daymar Rally. Safe? Yeah. So I guess you'd end up searching for, say, social and racing, maybe? What if I love committing crime and role-play, asking for a friend? What's that got to do with the presentation? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can search for whatever you like, and if it's not there, why not just create it yourself? So, we allowed you to join multiple orgs back in 2014. I can still do that, right? Oh, yeah. So, we're keeping it supported, and we're actually doing the Star Citizen thing, and we're going one bigger. One bigger. So, we're giving you an additional one to join when we actually bring it into the game, too. And we wanted to keep it because we've all played games where it's far too limited. Like, one org per character just isn't enough for a game this size. Yeah, and here you get an idea of what the full screen will look like. It's going to be your one-stop shop for joining or finding players for your org. So let's have a look at the core functions and features to look forward to in the rest of the app. This is the summary tab. On here, you can select one of your orgs that you're in on the left-hand side, and you'll see, well, a summary, a lot of at-a-glance information. So we'll introduce some of these one at a time. So first off, Announcements and org information. Simple stuff. You use them how you want to. <laughs> also, we're adding an events log. So in here, you'll get a summary of important events within the org and changes to org statuses or settings. In short, these things, well, it's a big verse, and it's easy to miss cool things that happen in your org. And these features will help you stay on top of the day-to-day -day life of being a work member. OK, we're also adding an events calendar. So by default, <laughs> so by default it's going to be populated with our in-game events, so you never miss a thing. But more importantly, you'll obviously be able to add your own as well. So you'll never miss another meetup to get together for group content. It's tough to get everyone on at the same time, right? So use this for your Convoy Tuesdays, Casual Fridays, holding hands in Horizon Saturdays, whatever you want. Getting crushed by the Buccaneers on Monday. That's Gabriel's favorite. It is my favorite. <laughs> Remember that it is our intent that all the features we're looking at, at here are available on Spectrum as well, allowing you to access this info even if you're not in the game. This applies to parties, comms, friends, and all other functions. So I can join multiple orgs, like the Buccaneers, the Corvette Club, or the Slam Truckers. But how will others see me in the verse if I have multiple choices? Surely I need to pick a banner. 
So that's covered by something new called representing. And it's actually quite similar to the existed, existing affiliation main status system on the website. So if you're in multiple orgs, you choose which one you want to represent, but you can only represent one at a time. Now, there are ongoing benefits for being in orgs, which we'll get to in a minute, but you choosing, oh, and choosing who you represent asks which one you want to benefit from at any given time. But why? Well, we wanted to support players who like to play with different groups of friends, but we didn't want players who are just in one to be at a major disadvantage to those that are in the full six, because really joining Multiple orgs should be your choice and not feel like it's a necessity. And there's no need for you to switch which org you're representing to see things like this Moby screen or org chat. But we want to put limitations on how often you can switch to avoid exploitation, well, exploiting the systems. And we don't want to punish anyone who's well, playing by the rules. And a big part of representing is visualizing it in world. We want you to be able to fly your banner for your org. So we're adding another MMO staple to the game. Tags. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the org leader will be able to set a tag for the org. And this gets appended to the name while you're representing. So you can easily see who is in which org at a glance. So we'll have it in chats in world, and if you're not interested in this stuff, well, you have the option to turn it off as well. How novel! <laughs> we'll be able to identify people around us. Wow. <laughs> JJ, I'm curious. You mentioned guilds before, and I'm, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing they fit into this somehow. Yes, so you may have spotted a few references on the UI to alignment earlier, but what is it? So, it's your opportunity to form a relationship between org and in-game guild. Now, just as you earn personal rep with the guilds, you can with your org now as well. So your org leaders pick which one you want to align with, and while representing, org members doing specific action, like contracts with them, will increase the org's alignment with the guild. But which guild should you pick? So all of our guilds are going to have a specific theme and associated gameplay. And you can basically pick the one that matches your theme or benefits your org the most. So a combat-focused org, like the Fellowship, might want to align with themselves with the Mercenary Guild, or one that enjoys making cash through trading and hauling, they'd probably want to align with the Interstellar Transport Guild. Yeah, so how do these benefits work? Well, as your alignment with a guild, it raises, uh, as it raises, you both unlock new benefits from that guild, as well as improve your previously unlocked benefits. So for example, if I align my org with the Academy of Science Guild, we might get research speed improvements. As my org performs contracts for this guild, alignment races, and that speed benefit gets better. And needless to say, other guilds will have other types of benefits. Finally, on guild alignment, you are not locked in forever. You can switch at any time. However, that will put your alignment back at zero. So it's a big choice. So every member gets full benefits. Well, not necessarily. We're also introducing loyalty. So it's similar to the org's alignment with a guild, but this represents your relationship to the org you're in. Anything you do that benefits the org while you are representing it will gain you loyalty with them. So for example, you could be doing missions for the org-aligned guild, or you could be depositing money and materials into org storage. Org storage? <sighs> oh, Another tease. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, we wanted to encourage long-term membership, because we don't think you should just be able to join a well-established org and then just get everything instantly for no effort. So to put it simply, having low loyalty limits what you gain from the org's alignment benefits, and having high loyalty gives you full access. We also wanted org leadership to be able to view members' current loyalty and use it as a tool to reward appropriately with things like ranks and permissions. And then loyalty resets to zero when you leave an org, so there's some incentive for sticking around. Wait, does that mean I lose my loyalty if I change my representation away? 
No, so not representing puts your contributions or ongoing benefits on hold. So when you start representing again, you essentially just pick up where you left off. But uh, what if I leave the org? It's not very loyal, so it resets. <laughs> right. Well, so, you know, the, not in my org, my buccaneers, they're mostly scoundrels, and so they tend to join and leave, and, you know, it's not very loyal in general. Uh, larger orgs, the, they tend to be a pain to manage them. With the flow of joiners and leavers, do we have any tools to help managers like me? Well, let's have a look at the members tab. So this is less complex than the previous tabs, but it's equally important. This is where you see the community of your org and your place in it. So in here, you will be able to manage members. You can leave notes and see the ranks of members. And as we did with the friends list and the party list, we're adding rich presence in here as well. This is the rank panel. It gives you a clear indication where you sit within the community. And you'll see permissions on here, but that's something that we'll delve more into at a later date. For now, I'll just say that the leader might be able to determine permissions for each rank, and, uh, well, it could be things like inviting new members or accessing org storage. Stop teasing us with org storage! God! Come on. <laughs> so, all right, so orgs form and friendship and animosities build up. Maybe my buccaneers and the fellowship of JJ don't really see eye to eye most of the time. Would be great for this to translate in game, wouldn't it? Hmm. It would, wouldn't it? <laughs> so yeah, it's a good job we got it covered, which is with our new alliances and rivalry system. So you're going to have the ability to create alliances and go to war. And there are many reasons to make friends. You might want to have trading partners, or you might want to group up for protection if you're playing somewhere like Pyro. And at the same time, there are probably going to be many reasons why you won't get along. Maybe an org keeps attacking or stealing from you. Alliances forming are an agreement between two org leaders, and it has to be mutual. You can't force someone to be friends. Unlike real life. Requests are sent from the screen if you have permission, and you can respond here as well. And as a bonus, ally dogs are going to have additional lines of communication, like alliance chat, or being able to share alliance events on the calendar, just to name a few. So, rivalry, that isn't a mutual agreement. If someone decides you're their rival, well, tough luck. Uh, however, you could reach a mutual agreement to make a truce, putting you back at neutral. And there's no real benefit to having rivals, so we want to make them easy to identify. Uh, that's why alliances and rivals, uh, rivalries tie directly into hostility indicators. So just like now, <laughs> you'll be able to see neutral contacts in white and party members show up in blue, Whereas your org wingmen will come in a dark green and your allied orgs in a paler green. Your rivals will show up in red. Or people in your kill list. The kill list. People on your kill list that we mentioned before will also show up in red or orange. If you're not, well, they're not legal to attack. That's the go straight to jail card if you, if you kill them here. Uh, so we'll be adding accessibility options for this stuff as well, to make sure that everybody can benefit from these updates. So, that's everything for Orgs today, but it's just the tip of the social iceberg. Uh, and we didn't have time to show you everything, but there's lots more to show in the future. And we're super excited because we finally get to deliver it. Yeah. Now, what have we learned? We're upgrading Salt Star Citizen social tools to MMO size. With a new social app in the MobiGlass, proper tools to manage parties with rich presence, ready check, and ship information. Richer chat with the niceties normally present in every game. A new party finder, a system that allows you to find players to play with. Revent beacons and guide system powered by rating and proficiency. On orgs, we're bringing orgs in the game. We're obviously with a new orgs app, but also 
Alignment. So you align your org with a guild and get benefits for your members. Representations, which identifies you in the verse and gives you benefits and loyalty to your orgs. And alliances and rivalry to identify friend from foe. And now, we're going to leave you with a short video to end on because we couldn't show everything we're working on. But what would it look like in the unlikely event where our two powerhouse orgs came together as one? And my org, right? Yeah. It's a little teaser for tomorrow's crafting your home presentation and what you can build together as an org and teasing something else coming in the future. Have a great CitizenCon, guys. See you there. See you.